Hi everyone, I'm Marthias from the 2021 Summer Youth Engaged in Library Leadership Program here at the San Francisco Public Library. And today, I'm gonna to show you one of my favorite ways to interact with nature by creating your own indoor jungle. And all it takes is one plant. It's a simple technique called propagation. Let's get started. The supplies you will need are a pair of clean scissors or garden shears if you have them, a small jar or bowl, and if you're using the bowl, you will also need some rubber bands, one growing medium, which we'll talk more about later, and one plant. Before we can get to planting, we need to learn a little bit about the type of plants you can use, plant anatomy, and plant needs. So when you're propagating, you're essentially taking part of one plant and creating a whole new plant with it. But the method of propagation I'm going to be showing you today only works with specific type of plants. The general rule to remember is that this will work with any type of vining or climbing plant. For example, this is a pothos, and this is a vining plant. You can tell it has a main vine here, and the leaves grow off of that vine. It doesn't necessarily stay in a clump, and the leaves all spread out and grow out off of this vine. On this philodendron micans, you can tell that it's also a vine because it is shooting out these main stems where the leaves grow off of instead of the leaves growing out of one central area. This spider plant here is not a vining plant. As you can see, the leaves all grow out of this cent one central area, making it not a vine. Today, I'll be using my Hartley philodendron. This is a beautiful, very easy plant to grow, and it's a fast grower. As you can tell, it is a vine as I have it growing up this trellis, and it can be found at most big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. But the good thing about propagation is that you don't have to go buy a new plant. If you already have one in your house or you know somebody who has a plant like this, you could just ask for a cutting. So now that we know what propagation is and what plants we can propagate, I'll show you how to do it. When we propagate a plant, we're going to cut the plant in specific places called nodes. When we look at a plant, we can identify the three main parts of it. The leaf, the petiole, and the main vine. The node is where the petiole and the main vine connect, and this is where new roots will come out of. So here on our pothos, we have right here on the bottom is the main vine where all the leaves are shooting out of. We call this the main vine. We have, of course, the leaves up here. And then we have the petiole, which is where the leaf connects down to the main vine. So this part right here is called the petiole. On our philodendron micans, we can tell that here is the main vine where all the leaves are coming off of, right here. And then of course we have the leaves and the petiole where the leaf connects to the vine. So this right here, this part would be the node, right where the petiole and the main vine connect. So now I'm gonna cut off multiple nodes of my Hartley philodendron to make a new plant. So I'm gonna be cutting along this vine right here. So this right here is one node we have the petiole which would connect to this baby leaf that's opening. So I'm gonna cut right there. And then here we have another leaf. We have the petiole and the stem. So we have the node. As you can see, I'm cutting above and below each node just to get the node and cutting off any excess of the stem. We have another leaf, the petiole, and then along the main stem, I'm gonna cut above it and below it. So now that we have our cuttings, I have five with me. I'm not sure if this one will actually sprout anything, but we will see. Um, you're going to want to let these sit out just on the table, no water, just sitting out for about half an hour to an hour. This stuff isn't necessary, but it helps the ends of the cutting dry out a little bit and seal themselves. This prevents the plant from rotting later on. While we wait for our cuttings to seal, we need to choose a growing medium. A growing medium is simply what you will be growing your plants in. There are four popular growing mediums used for propagation. Soil, water, perlite, and sphagnum moss. Each have their own benefits and downsides, but before we can choose, we need to learn what our plant needs. Plants require four nutrients to grow successfully. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium often referred to as NPK. Nitrogen encourages leaf growth. Phosphorus encourages root, flower, and fruit growth, although we mostly want root. 
and potassium improves the overall function of the plant. So back to the different growing mediums, I'm going to outline the NPK levels, some pros and some cons of each medium so that we can choose which would be best for our plant. Soil has the highest amount of NPK of all four. It allows your cuttings to grow very strong roots because soil is the most natural habitat. However, soil can also have bacteria and needs to be very well draining or it can cause your cuttings to rot. Sphagnum moss, on the other hand, has far less NPK, but it retains water very well while not causing rot. Another downside is that sphagnum moss can be harder to find and is more expensive. Perlite has almost no NPK, but is very well draining and is sterile, so your cuttings are very unlikely to rot. However, it can be messy and should be handled outdoors to prevent being inhaled excessively. Lastly is water. Water has no NPK, but it is very easy to use, accessible, and allows you to track the progress of your cuttings because you can actually see the roots. Additionally, it has almost no cons. So out of our four choices, I will be using water for my cuttings today. So now that our cuttings have sealed themselves and we have our growing medium, all we have to do is put it together. You're going to want to use a small jar, preferably glass or plastic, so you can see your progress with a skinny neck so it will support the leaves. Just fill it up with water, that's probably enough, and just place your cuttings into it, making sure, oh, well that's not enough, so <laughs> put your cuttings into it. And so what you want to do is make sure that the nodes are submerged. As you can see, mine are not submerged. So I'm going to add more water into it, just until you see there, all underwater. If you don't have a small glass jar, you can also just use a bowl and those rubber bands. You're going to create a grid with the rubber bands on the top of the bowl like this. Now, just fill it up with some water. So create a grid, put some water in it, and then just put your cuttings in between the rubber bands so that they can support the leaf and keep them right side up. And again, you're just going to want to make sure that the nodes in there on, are all nice and submerged in the water. You're going to want to keep these in bright indirect sunlight. This can be found a few feet away from a window where the sun will be shining directly on them for more than a few hours. If you, can, if you put your hand up in the area and you can see a strongly defined shadow, it's probably too bright. You'll also need to change the water on your cuttings every week just to make sure there's no buildup or any bacteria that could potentially harm your cuttings. And in a few weeks to a month, you should start to see roots popping out. Once they're a few inches long, you're ready to transfer them to soil and have a whole new plant. Here are some beautiful plants I'm currently growing from cuttings. This is a Monstera minima. This is a Monstera adansonii. And here is a plant wall that I created completely out of cuttings. So now that you're an expert on propagation, you can teach your friends, your family, and even give them cuttings of your own plants. If you want to continue learning more about plants, like different types of them, what plants can do for you, and how to style them, check out the reading list I've created along with this video. All the books are free on Hoopla.com. And also, make sure to check out the rest of the Yale 2021 videos. There's a lot of really cool ones out there. So I'll see you next time. Bye!